Hi guys, welcome to this Microsoft Access course part two. In this session, we're going to continue to look at table properties and data type. So first of all, just to recap where we left off in part one, just going to open the table. We had created this table with a short lookup list there. And if I look at the design view, you can see the field types there. Now in the field type list, as you can see, we've got some of these fields, but not all of them. I want to have a look today at a couple of these other ones, um, the attachment, the calculation field, OLE objects, and the yes, no field. So we're just gonna add some extra column headings, field names in the list. So the first one is going to be a salary field. And if I just type the letter C, that will pick up currency. So that's set to currency. So any figure I put in there, if I save that and have a look, there it is. I put some figures in there. So we've got to see that going to pounds. And the default setting is zero for a new row. So that's okay. Now if I go back into design and type a pension, if I go, maybe do a yes, no on this one. Yes, no. Save. Have a look. It gives me a tick box. If I go, yes, ticked on. This guy's got a pension. Not ticked there. This guy has not got a pension. Back into design. Next one down. If I say um, certificates. Now, in the previous versions of Access, going back quite a while, you didn't have this attachment field. You just had this option, OLE object, object linking and embedding. I'll talk about that in a minute, but first, first, first of all, I want to look at attachment. Save that. This feature allows you to attach multiple documents to a record, to one record. And it works like this. If I double click on it, and I've got the option to add files from my computer, which I will do, add a picture of myself. And you can see there, there's the option to add several different files, including video clips and all sorts of stuff. You can add there Word documents, Excel files, and they are attached to this database, but not in the database, therefore it saves space. I'll just click OK for that. And then you get a little one there, and to see that you just double click on it, and then you double click on the picture, and it opens up a picture of myself. Close that one down, click OK to that, and then back into design. Next one is a calculated field. So let's try this one. So pension, I'll call it. Amount. And then I'm going to select from this list calculated field. Now the options for calculations are quite limited at table level. Once you get into queries and forms and reports, you have a lot more functionality. But for this, it lists the fields. So I'm going to use the salary field for this example. And I'm just going to do a simple calculation times 0 0.04. Click OK to that. Save the formula. Have a look at the information. So there you can see it's given me the answer. And if we go back into design, you can format that to display in currency. Save it again. Have a look. Now it's in pounds. The next one I want to look at is the object linking and embedding, this one. And to do that, I'm going to use a photo. Now, I could put video or Word document or Excel file there. This is embedding a single document or a single item per record, per line. Set that to OLE object. Save. Have a look. And then you have a blank column. If I right click, I can insert an object. The wizard gives me two options, create a new, so I could create a new blank file or an Excel chart. This time I'm gonna go from file and browse. 
and I'll pick a photograph and click OK. Now you get this sitting there as a package. To run it or open it, it would be a case of double clicking that and you can open that. And there's a the picture. Notice that picture is not very good and not very not well formatted. In a, in a later session, I'll explain how to create photos and images in a table and then have them um, picked up in a form in a nice formatted way, far better than that. But that's just an example of how an OLE object field works. So we go back into design and just have a look at the list. Um, everything else is covered. We haven't done the lookup wizard, but we have actually done a lookup in the previous session manually. And in the next session, I will do that manually again and go through all the other options. But for now, that's the difference, uh, all the different um, field types I want to cover. One last thing I want to do is um, when we were on doing the properties in the last session, um, I said you could put default values in these fields there so certain things could be filled in to force uh, a certain type of data entry. Well you can do that sort of thing with table properties as, as well. So over on the right if I just close this property sheet off you have table properties. Now because we're dealing with tables um, this is talking about table properties. Later on in different sessions we will look at using macros to do a similar sort of thing and attaching these to um, fields. But for now, we've got a validation rule line there, and I'm going to do a very simple one. I'm going to say that um, date promoted must be greater than date joined. Basically, you can't get promoted before you've joined. Click OK to that. When I save this, it's going to say the data integrity rules have changed. Say yes to that. Have a look. Now, at the moment, everything's okay, but if I create a new person, so if I give them one, two, five, it'll still be a private John Jones, Ben Jones's brother, say. He joined today. And let's see if I can make a mistake. Let's say he, get, he got promoted on the 20th of August 2019. That should trigger an error message. Now, it doesn't trigger it straight away, but it will trigger it when I get to the end of this record. Now, the difference with this and using a macro on a field on a form, which we'll cover later on, that would flag up straight away as soon as you did that typo. So it's slightly... Um, I'll put him down as a driver record created and his story is okay that's triggered some issue there date promoted date joined okay so it doesn't like that it's telling me it's telling me what the issue is so I'll just go and change that to the 22nd of August that should be okay then I can give it the salary 20,000 it has got a pension and therefore that works. Now obviously the pension on this guy is not tick this, so I could do a more complicated formula there to basically work out whether this field gets calculated if there's a yes there or a no there. So ideally I would want that not to be calculated. So that would be a different calculation and I'll do that on a later session. But for now that's all I want to cover on this little session. We've covered the rest of the, the field types and we've had a look at each one of those. So that's the end of this session so hopefully you've enjoyed that and next session what we're going to look at is actually getting data on the screen, looking at filters, moving columns around, changing the default settings of columns, looking at lookups, copy and paste and things like that. So hopefully you'll join me for that one but that's the end of this session and thank you for your time.